Salut everyone, in this video we're gonna be talking about the latest release of Canonical, Ubuntu 25.10, and it's called Questing Coca. Yeah, I have to look at my note because those names, they, they are really like fancy and cute, but they seem to be more and more complicated after each release. But anyways, this is the latest release, and if you are into the Linux world, you know that Ubuntu is a big name on the industry and uh, I've been following their, their work in this channel for the latest, like fourth, I think four or fifth uh, release. And man, each time it comes with a lot of quirk, a lot of issue, and we're going to be covering them in this video. So are you ready? Let's get into it. As always, we're going to start with a little bit of context. The first thing I want to put out of the way is the fact that I have nothing against Canonical or Ubuntu in general. And I want this message to be clear uh, because in my benchmarking uh, methodology and the work I put regarding like testing those distro, I don't have any bias, right? I, I, I need to be clear because sometimes I could sound like a, a arch uh, lover, arch elitist or whatever, but this is not the case. I'm highly critical because I believe that Canonical has the tool, they have the developer, they have uh, the, the, the money to bring a Linux desktop experience way better than what they have been providing for the last four previous releases. I want that to be really clear. There is a lot of bugs which have been pushed even if they were known about the team of Canonical in the new release. They just push it no matter what. And I've seen a lot of users being kind of like victim of the way the release cycle is being pushed from the Canonical team no matter what. And you will see in this review uh, is, is there is another problem like that. So uh, I won't go through the previous issue, just go through my channel and check all the issues I encounter with the previous uh, release. I'm going to talk about the current issue. I'm pretty sure they're going to be resolved in the future, but I really need to share with you my experience. And I don't want any of the viewers of this channel to kind of like not be aware of what's actually happening uh, with this latest release of Ubuntu. So let's jump real quick about the announce of this uh, Ubuntu 25.10. And really what come out, it's not a big, big upgrade, but really what come out is the fact that uh, it's supporting GNOME 49 out of the box. And the big feature, in my opinion, is the platform security improvement with TPM backed FD. So this I did not test because I believe it requires like a long test uh, type of approach where you use uh, this for, I don't know, like maybe uh, two or three months to see if you have actually issue regarding uh, uh, this all new implementation of uh, the TPM backed FD. But really what it is, is that this feature is going to use your TPM module on your motherboard to encrypt your hard drive. And instead of having to type your password each time you boot, now it's going to be loaded up directly via the TPM module. So I think in terms of usage, it's a pretty neat feature. And this is, in my opinion, like the biggest like value added in this release. However, as it's written here, it's still in experimental feature. So knowing the way it works with Ubuntu, I will still wait a little bit before jumping and using it uh, because on the long term, you might get pretty hurt by uh, this if you lose all your data. And outside of this, uh, you know, there is nothing really crazy about this release. It's more like an incremental release preparing for the big LTS release, which is going to be coming, I guess, in the next six months. In terms of methodology, I did cover Ubuntu and Kubuntu 25.10 in the live stream. So I'm going to put the link in the description below. Like that, you're going to have like the full experience. I think it's a six hour stream, uh, but you, you can still watch the benchmark. You can still kind of like see exactly what happened to me 
while I was testing the distro. And the first thing I need to say about Ubuntu itself, we're going to be focusing on that first, is that the installation process was flawless. I have nothing to say about this. Uh, it's pretty sweet. He didn't delete my bootloader partition. He didn't do anything weird. He did activate uh, the media codec uh, proprietary one because I asked them to do it. It worked. And I also was able to have the latest NVIDIA driver from their repo. So I don't believe it's their latest latest, but they are pretty recent. And this did not cause any issue regarding my overall like installation experience. So on the installation process, there is nothing to say. It's uh, definitely a big plus in terms of easiness. Now let's talk about the elephant in the room because this is one of the big negative I had to encounter is the fact that flat pack were not working. I could not install any flat pack and it's a known bug. They have known about it for like three or four weeks before the release, the official release, but they still decided to push it. So at this point, if you were even upgrading, you will be in the position where all your flat pack application, they will be totally unusable. I don't know. I don't know what they are doing. I don't know why they don't delay the release. I don't know why. I don't know why. I'm pretty sure while I'm recording this video that the potential bug regarding the flat pack has been fixed. I hope I hope so, right? Because 25.10 has been released the 9th of October. And while I'm recording this video, we are the 20th of October. So almost two weeks after, I'm expecting them to fix it. But it kind of like make me uh, ask myself, is a simple, like an obvious question, which is why? Like, like, like why are they pushing this type of uh, update and release knowing that something like Flatpak is not working? So this, in my opinion, is, is, is the biggest issue. The second point I think I need to mention again and again is the fact that most of their applications are getting pushed through Snap. So now in the App Store, when you install something, you have this little option that lets you choose between Snap and uh, the, the, the Debian version of the installer. I'm thinking, for example, about Steam. And it's pretty sweet that you can avoid Snap. It's not kind of like forced to you. You can still have, you know, an alternative, at least for Steam. And in this case, you, you better do it. You better choose the Debian version instead of going on the Snap version because the Snap version is just underperforming. I've been proving it for my last like three previous video. I proved it again during the stream. You're going to lose a lot of performance. And I'm especially talking about the 1% lows in game if you decide to go with the Snap version of Steam. And this is, in my opinion, like just awful, right? Because it's a known problem. We have been aware of it for like years now. And well, it's still not be fixed. So if you can't fix it, why are you still pushing it in uh, uh, the, the distro, right? Like why is it still there? We don't need the Snap version of Steam. End of story. And for the new user, uh, because he can't even install the Flatpak version, because let's say he doesn't want to touch the native version. Well, on top of that, you, you have less and less uh, alternative. So yes, uh, it's, it's questionable to say the least. Also need to mention that this issue relating to Snap is not, you know, locked on Ubuntu. It's also an issue on Kubuntu. We did the test. And again, the Snap version was underperforming versus uh, the native version of Steam. So the game which are running in it are going to be like underperforming. I need to say it. I feel like I'm a parrot just saying the same thing again and again each time a new like Ubuntu release uh, is out. And I still hope deep down like they're going to fix it. But hey, well, uh, now let's talk about the, the Ubuntu version. So the Ubuntu version uh, was a, a different beast. So the, the first thing I need to mention is the fact that the flat pack problem did not exist on Ubuntu. So you could use flat pack on Ubuntu believe it or not. 
but uh, I had other bugs. One being related uh, to the new set of Rust applications uh, which have been pushed into Ubuntu in general. Those ones, they were working good on the original like Ubuntu version, but on Kubuntu, I got so many bugs and I'm going to show some of them on screen, but I had some error popping out each time I will use the sudo command, uh, which was really odd. Uh, when you come to the installation, because I, I forgot to mention that, like the installation of Kubuntu was kind of bugged. So he installed everything, and then at the end, he pushed me an error message. Uh, it was not really smooth versus the Ubuntu version. It's the first time that happens to me, to be fair, but I need to mention it. And um, the other like, big, big problem related to uh, Kubuntu was the fact that the NVIDIA driver were not installable via the GUI. So normally on Kubuntu uh, in KDE, you have these settings panel within the system setting panel that exist that let you install the driver through the GUI. It, it's pretty neat, I have to say. But for whatever reason, it was not working for me on 25.10. So I had to install the driver manually. So again, like nothing crazy, but for a new user, installing the NVIDIA driver manually after f having a, an installation, which was kind of like half broken because it kind of like push you some weird message and having sudo, which was pushing like weird error message on the desktop, I have to say, uh, bon, it, 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 it start to add up. Uh, for uh, a distribution being released by a company of a caliber uh, of Canonical. Like, we're not talking about 10 little developers in their garage pushing a new distro. We are talking about Canonical, guys. I'm, I'm just, like, disappointed. Again, I have to, to mention it to you guys. Uh, it, it, it was not a good experience out of the box. Now you know about the latest release of Canonical Ubuntu 25.10. And yes, it's, it's another misrelease in my opinion. It's another misrelease uh, because we are now in a landscape where users are going to try Linux. And when it comes to Linux, they're going to think about Ubuntu, right? Ubuntu is one of the biggest, if not the biggest distro associated with Linux. And man, I, I just feel bad for a new user who is going to jump into this world and launch the installation of Ubuntu. Everything is going to be fine because installations are kind of okay. And then he's going to realize that, oh, he can install Flatpak. Oh, there is a problem, right? It's meh. Then he's going to run the game on Steam. He's going to install Steam because he doesn't even know about, about Snap, right? This new user, it, it doesn't know. And is going to notice that the performance is kind of meh. Like the 1% the, the lows are really low. And it's going to be, man, like Ubuntu is, is not really that good. Huh? Linux is not, is not really that great. And, and, and this is where I believe, like, I, I need to make this video to kind of, like, share what is the experience, right? What is the real experience you're going to get if you install this distribution for gaming? And also, like, for the... The Linux users out there who are experimented, I think like recommending Ubuntu to a gamer is not a good idea. And, and, and I will push it even further, even to a non, I would say it, non-gamer, even for someone who just want to, you know, enjoy uh, a little bit of browsing and uh, uh, do some, you know, office stuff on their PC. I do believe that as it is right now, Ubuntu is not the best choice. It, it kind of like, you know, makes me feel like not really great, but think about it. This release, flat pack were broken. What will be the next broken thing on Ubuntu? Imagine if you pushed this previous Ubuntu release to one of your friends who is not really like technical, like savvy, and not into the Linux world, just want to have his PC working and, and browse to, to check his bank account. And you did install his browser in Flatpak to avoid the Snap mess, right? Because we know that Firefox is not the best on Snap. 
and now you upgrade and guess what it doesn't even use his browser anymore he can't he can't because flatpak is broken and it's gonna take two weeks to be fixed how how is that even possible for a company as big as canonical it's just mind-blowing it's just mind-blowing so you know right now as it is I, I would say like i wouldn't recommend ubuntu for anyone right obviously if you are a linux savvy person and you really like the theming of ubuntu you can't live without it okay you know you have the resource the time and the knowledge to fix it we did fix it during the stream it was fine but still for a company like that and uh you know a brand like ubuntu and canonical i was expecting better voilà. so this is said i hope they're gonna do better in the future i hope they're gonna maybe delay their release uh, cycle and be like okay this is not ready a key feature that flat pack is not working fix it right and until we push it maybe they're gonna start to remove snap packages which are like fundamentally broken i'm thinking about the steam packages why is it still in your library remove it it's not worth it right you are putting new linux users in a position where they're gonna hate linux because they're gonna try the snap version of steam and they're gonna have a bad experience i'm sorry guys like i think it need to be said and I, I i don't understand i don't understand what they are doing so that was my review of uh, ubuntu uh, kubuntu 25.10 uh, stay away from this just install something else and uh, put the ubuntu theme if you are already into it that will be my two cents guys thank you very much for watching uh, i want to thank particularly all the members of la creme de la creme club who are supporting this channel financially uh, via patreon youtube membership direct paypal donation guys thank you very much you are the best and as always see you in the next one bisous bisous